Welcome to a special CK podcast here on the Basketball Zone YouTube channel. Today's special guest is Prodigy G NBA. That's how he goes by on Twitter. He is my Rockets go-to expert when it comes to Rockets coverage. It's an honor and a pleasure to have you on, brother. He's also from Portugal, so there's a eight, nine hour difference right now. So respect to you, my man. How's your day going so far? Yeah, it's all good. It's 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 an honor, an honor to be here. And I'm always up to talk some Rockets. It's fun, man. I know there's 12 games, not doing very well re record-wise, but there have been some positives. The team has been competitive, right? They've been in a lot of games where they could have won. Maybe a simple adjustment here, a, a different action there. We'll get into all of those things. So far, though, what has your thoughts been on Jalen Green's overall season? I mean, I, I think Kalen has was not as NBA ready as many would have expected, but that's not a problem. Uh, the Rockets are rebuilding anyway, and nobody really planned to be good this year. Um, I think his efficiency numbers don't look too good because he finds himself having to like jack up the shots a lot of the time because, and that's probably something we'll get into it further further along. Is the priority for the Rockets doesn't seem to be Jalen Green as of right now. Um, there's a lot of moments where he like he scores seven points in like a, a two minute in a two minute window, and then he doesn't touch the ball again until like the next quarter or something like that. Um, because I don't know, it's just it's it's been a weird approach. He's shown a lot of flashes, and that's ultimately what you want out of a rookie. Uh, he needs to be a little bit more consistent. He still has a lot of those classic rookie moments where. He's settling for jump shots, or uh, he's not attacking all the time. But he's definitely shown a lot of promise. Uh, Scoring-wise, he has been significant, significantly better uh, at uh, passing than what most would have mm -hmm. expected. And his positioning on defense is also better than expected. I feel like he gets a lot of contests um, on shots, but he's just too weak right now. He, he doesn't have a lot of muscle. He's to slight frame for um, for for his defense to really be that effective, if you know what I mean. Uh, right. But I think it's it's definitely something that will come with how as the years pass and his body grows stronger and more ready for the NBA. So when I think about the Rockets and I watch them play, I do think there is a coaching inconsistency in Rob Kimball, and you retweeted this as a matter of fact. I also follow him. He pretty much said, I don't mind losing games when the goal is development. I do mind throwing your number two overall pick in the corner without touching the ball for most of the game, though. Jalen has to get more than eight to nine field goal attempts, half of them. Heaves with the shot clock expiring. Those are one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to grading the coach's overall scheme, and I feel like coach silas is really like he doesn't focus much on weak side action which there should be there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one stagnant play and it bugs me because this team should be able to move the ball and as you said jalen green has shown to be a better passer than what he came in as right those little things man those nuances of of, of just the overall scheme is what bugs me like would you say that has a lot to do with his inconsistencies as well yeah, I would definitely agree. I think Silas has been very underwhelming, and he, as incredible as it might seem, I think the offense last year, with all the injuries that we had and all the the, the under talented roster that we had, at times looked more fluid than than what we have right now. There's a lot of inconsistent philosophies with the rebuilding team that Silas has. I would say, he, I definitely agree. He lets the um, he lets the, the offense like boil down to a, an ISO a lot of the time, and he wastes a lot of time. They're 25th uh, in, in points, yeah. bro. Like, that's unacceptable for me. Yeah, that's that's crazy because he he is also like not not got the, the rotation spin down. Like, we see a lot of lineups with really bad spacing, we see a lot, a lot of times the the both sides and wood are stuck trying to gain post position and that's really really like not what you expect of out of a team that has two cards with such a high ceiling so i guess i guess i would say it boils down to everybody's going trying to get their own and there's a lot of mouth mouth mm -hmm. to feed and at the end of the day it doesn't let Jalen green take as many shots or or uh the offense revolving around him as much as i would like it to be 
Okay, so let's talk about Albert and Shengun, who I'm a huge fan of. I had him number seven overall on my big board. I'm not high on him. I think there has been an adjustment period for a kid who doesn't speak English. She's coming into a whole new culture. So there's that culture shock aspect to just basketball in his life. So, again, I think some of that is part of the struggles. A lot of it, too, is just the game speed. I did a breakdown on him specifically uh, against Anthony Davis, obviously – Kind of unfair because Anthony Davis is so good, right? But you could see the little things that if he improves on, just like actually running down the floor full speed as opposed to kind of like half jogging what he kind of likes to do sometimes or even when he flops too much. Calls that he would normally get in Europe, he's not going to get here in the NBA, especially now how the officiating crew is, you know, calling these games, allowing more physicality. He needs to just use his strength, which he is very strong for his size and for his age. Those are just the little things that he needs to improve on. He sees the floor really well, like that behind the back pass with that he made that he didn't make. Uh, I think it was, to, was to to Junior. Like that was an insane look. Like the fact that he's 19 and he's able to see that play already is such a huge positive for me. That that's what I took out of that play, regardless of not if the result was what you wanted, but the process is exactly what Rockets fans should be excited about because I see a very bright future. At worst, to me, I mean, he's going to be a guy that's going to put up 18 and 10 with the right amount of time. I get it. There's there's a guy in ties who's, you know, taking some of those minutes. He gets in foul trouble too much. So there's, there's things that he needs to improve on. But how would you grade his overall play so far? I mean, I would say he's been the best rookie um, on our team thus far. I, really? I, I think... I think there's even a debate to say that, and I tweeted about this yesterday, that if I had to choose between him and Wood right now, I would choose him uh, if I had to keep one. Talk because to me, he's okay. Been, he's been that impressive. Like, I was really high on him uh, months before the draft, and I kind of cooled down on him because Wood was showing really good flashes, and I didn't think that was a good pairing. But... He's been he's been amazing, man. His main red flag was was defense, and I think that's actually been his strong suit thus far. He's someone who the game plays really slow for him. He he's he, you can tell that he was uh, a pro uh, last year. He, you can tell that he's not rushed into anything. He he does foul a lot, and a lot of that it's it's because he he likes to go for every board. He goes for offensive rebounds. He's a really physical guy. So he gets a lot of calls against him because he's a rookie. You don't, you got to earn that respect in the, in the NBA. So, and he has a lot of like, when he's blocking a shot, he's really emphatic with it. Like he's swinging his arms around. So yeah, it's really easy for the, the, it's really easy for the ref to call a foul. But I, I have been really impressed with his defense. I, I think that the lack of athleticism was overblown. I mean, it's there, but it's not that big of a deal. Right. And something that's been really surprising is, and that's a, a fun fact for you. Did you know that he's the the best like three point shooter of the draft class thus far? He's shooting like forty something percent from three, although it's really small sample size. He's like shooting right. one a game, uh, but he's shooting really well from there. And wow. you can you can see just watching the games, uh, just watching the game, he the offense looks a lot better when he's on the floor regardless of the personnel that's around him. And that's a, a really big like thing for me because this is a team with a lot of rookies, a lot of inexperience. And he goes out there and he plays better than most of the vets. And he's more in control than most of the vets. So it's so much so that I already said, if we're in a position to draft another uh, forward next draft, because it's a really uh, he uh, class heavy on forwards, he's the guy I want at the five. And... Christian has got it's got a, has got a move if because Sangun will earn that spot until the end of the season. You're not lying. He's shooting 46.2 percent from beyond the arc. Wow. And obviously on low volume, so you know that percentage will probably come down if he shoots more. It's it's pretty obvious. But still, I mean, you know, again, that was my thing too. Like if you watch all my break, it was I had multiple videos on Sangun. I said. How is it that people want to complain about his three-point shot? And he didn't shoot it that much, obviously, in, in Europe. And I'm like, if you look at his mechanics, his mid-range shot, why would you not think that his shot will translate at the NBA? To me, it was just silly. I was like, yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Well. Although he has struggled 
this season. He's only shooting 67.4%, which that needs to go up. There's no excuses for that. I love how he just kisses the ball and he talks to the ball and all those things. Uh, do you think um, you said that you don't like the pairing between Wood and Shangun? I, I think in theory it works, but because they're both not great defensively, even though Shangun has been surprisingly better in that end, is it because Wood is just soft, or is, like is that fair to say, or what is it about that duel that you don't like? I wouldn't say Wood is soft. I, I feel like something he's gotten a lot of, a lot better at this season is like getting down and dirty and fighting for rebounds and stuff like that. He's averaging, I think, two more rebounds than he did last season. And you can tell that he's actually fighting for them because he's playing on a two big lineup with high. So if he wants rebounds, he's got to earn them. But I feel like the problem is Christian Wood's attitude. And what I mean by that is mm. he feels he's the best player on the team and he might be right. But from, from that, he, he thinks, okay, if I'm the best player, I need to be creating my own shot. I need to be a focal point of the offense. And I feel like he's a good fit. Uh, and I consider like Jamari Smith Jr. Uh, on the next draft has to be a good fit as well on paper because they do the same stuff. The, the problem is Wood's trying to do too much. Wood's trying to post up. He's demanding more touches. He's trying to shoot step back threes. He's trying to pull up. And he's been surprisingly successful at pulling up from three. But the problem is he's not doing what he was good at last year that made the team work so well. He wasn't... He, last year he was one of the best uh, bigs in the league at, at, at running the pick and roll game. He could pick he and roll, amazing. he could pick and pop. He could catch lobs. He could like throw floaters if he, if he got the post position. But does that have to do with like his guards not really looking for that? And, and KPJ and Jalen Green? I feel like it's not as strong suit. So, like the guards are not helping too much, but we saw last year in, in, in stretches when they play together that they can work really well if they're playing that pick and roll game. But I feel like the, the offense gets stagnant too much sometimes because I, I mean there's a, a really good screenshot where Joe and Green has the the ball at the top of the key against Isaiah Stewart from the mm -hmm. Detroit Pistons, and I'm like, okay, this is a clear mismatch. Jalen can just speed past this guy and score, but you've got Thais and Wood both on the block trying to post up their defenders because there's a switch. I mean, I know there's a switch, but Christian Wood's not that good at post-ups, and Jalen Green himself can punish the the switch that he has on him. Like, Isaiah Stewart has no chance to keep up with Jalen if Jalen is driving past him. So it just feels like Wood's trying to do too much, and if if that's the, the, the kind of player that he wants to be, I just don't see the fit with, with Sengun, because he would be perfect for Sengun if you got Sengun in the post position, and you got Wood cutting, or Wood uh, spacing the floor, and, and some other people cutting, but if if you got a, if you go with demanding the ball in the post and trying to to do too much on the perimeter, I, I feel like that's not a good fit. Right, and that's crazy because in theory, as I said earlier, they do seem like the right duo because Wood is able to stretch the floor with his three point shot. But like you said, if you're asking for the ball, Shangun's asking for the ball too much. There isn't that spacing that you need for Jalen Green for KPJ. You mentioned some of the forwards in the upcoming class, but I'm a big fan of Usman Guru, but. You don't think he'd be the perfect fit next to a guy like Shangun? I feel like it's tough spacing wise. I feel like the Garuba needs to show um, that he can shoot. But the, my 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 what I what I'd like Garu, to see Garuba as, and we haven't seen him play nearly anything this season, which is really sad because you've just drafted this guy with a first over with a first round pick, and you're not playing him. Uh, I would like to see Garuba as a small ball five when Sengun yeah. sits because mm -hmm. he is also a guy that can pass the ball. He's also a guy that can set really tough screens and he's a guy that can switch on the perimeter. So if you if you run him as a small ball five, there's a lot of mismatches that you can you can capitalize on and he can do pretty much everything that a, a true five can. Uh, so I really see a future for, her, for him in the Rockets that way because the Rockets are an organization known for exploring that stuff with I mean, the classic PJ Tucker at center meme. Right. So I, I am also really high on Garuba. We just haven't gotten to see much from him, sadly. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm very high on him. I think he's one of the best defensive players in this draft class. We haven't seen it because, well, I mean, it's funny because this team needs defense uh, and they haven't given them a chance, uh, which is funny to me. Uh, as you said, it's a development year in terms of results, wins and losses. Like, you know, there's going to be a lot of losses. There's already a lot of losses. They've won one game. I don't see the point of not playing him, you know? It's like, Man, it's crazy. That's that's a really big criticism on Silas because if you go look at our rotation, uh, not last game, but the, the games before, mm-hmm. literally half the rotation is guys that are vets. Like, he's playing David Waba, DJ Augustine, Daniel Thais, uh, Daniel Faust. And I'm like, dude, dude, you're losing the games anyway. You might as well play the young guys. Like, these... I get the argument that you want to play some vets to stabilize the game for the right. for the other right. guys, and it it makes sense if you play Eric Gordon, who's a guy that stabilizes I love the Eric. game. Uh, DJ Augustine is also a guy that can help the other guys work, but like Nuwaba, who can't space the floor, Daniel House, who often trying to do too much, and Daniel Thais, if he is playing with another big, don't really make sense to play if you're going to lose the game anyway, and it's a development year. Like these guys need to be getting minutes. Or they need to hit the G League and get minutes there, and neither of them is happening right now, and that's that's really one of my big my big things with with Salas right now. So, would you want Josh Christopher and Sang and uh, Garuba to go to the G League? It depends. I would rather uh, Christopher take over the um, the Augustine minutes and Garuba take over the size minutes. But if that's oh, if we're not trying to do that, and if we're trying to showcase some of these vets maybe for a trade, then at least, at the very least, they need to be in the G League to get some playing time, you know? There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a great point. Like, I see guys like Daniel House, even a guy like Augustine, and definitely Gordon. Like, Gordon's not going to stay there but by the deadline. There's going to be a team that's going to ask and need a guy like that that can get his own shot especially if he's like the fifth, sixth option, he's going to get open shots, say the Sixers or a team like that. Like that's what they're going to be looking for. So I do understand what they're doing, but if that's the case, as you said, they should, uh, Christopher and Garuba should be playing in the G League right now until further notice. That way there's just not sitting, uh, just like Queda, right? In Sacramento, like he's playing in the G League because there's a lot of bigs in front of him. And it makes sense. You want the guy to develop, to start getting used to the speed of the game, and those little nuances of basketball that matter when it comes down to it. I think this is a very important question. Maybe the most important question of the show is, do you think KPJ is the future and present point guard of this team? And and by that, I mean, can he actually be a point guard that makes everybody around him better? And will it result and to wins ultimately because guys can put up stats and if they're empty calories, it doesn't matter. That's true. Um, that's definitely one of the biggest questions and one of the biggest debates amongst Rockets fans right now. I, going into the season, was a big fan of playing KPJ as the point guard. He did it at Me too. The end last season to pretty good success, I would say. Um, he had a pretty good uh, assist to turnover ratio, even though his shot wasn't falling. The biggest difference for me is, with KPJ, it's all about his attitude. If he remains aggressive, and he was against the Trailblazers uh, the last game, that's that's a game where he got five assists and one turnover. If he remains aggressive, and he's driving to the rim, and he's focusing on generating his own shot first, the, um, like the passing will come around, and he'll, cre- he'll create um, advantages by himself to kind of like Harden does, who's not like your prototypical pass-first guy. Right. But his offense will unlock his passing. And I think KPJ is the same. And this season, it feels like somebody told him, oh, you're a point guard, so you got to set everyone up and you got to run sets. And it feels right. like he's gotten a little confused and he's going away from, from his scoring and it, it's, making, it's making it tough on him. But I think it's also... Uh, I, I, I could pull up a tweet that says this. His, his first seven games, he was getting more turnovers than assists. And his, his five games since... He's had a 1.8 uh, assist to turnover ratio, which is pretty good. So I think mm-hmm. I think there's 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 definitely been progress, and his handle needs to, to tighten up a little bit because he he loses the handle uh, the the handle a little bit. But to answer the question, do I think he's the point guard for the future? I still believe he can be, uh, just because he's so talented. Yeah, he is. Uh, but uh, it's it's a tough question because. He would also be perfectly fine ha- as like a wing or a shooting guard that can 
uh, run your second unit or something like that. But I'm perfectly comfortable with at least until the end of his rookie deal, giving him the shot and seeing seeing if, if he is. And then based on that, you can make a decision. It's not like next draft is, is right. heavy on point cards anyway. So you're not probably, unless you get, I mean, Hardy isn't a pass first guy. I, I guess yeah. the best point card is probably Ty Ty Washington. Mm-hmm. So, and he's probably not on the range that the Rockets get a pick because they pick like probably top five and then uh, like 20 something with the Heat or the Brooklyn pick. So since there's not really a chance to take a guy like that, I feel like you give him until the end of next season and then you have to make a decision. Yeah, Hardy and uh, Jalen Green, I personally wouldn't like that duo, in in my opinion. I think they're very similar players. Yeah. Uh, and I, I do see KPJ, I still believe in him to be that point guard. And if at worst case he's not, you can always run a three-guard lineup. Like, he's able to create shots for others uh, and, and also for himself so that matters like he has that skill set and as you said maybe this season they're they're using it as a tester to see can he do it long term like they're teaching him to to build different types of habits maybe because as you said like he's so concerned about being quote unquote the point guard that he's gone away from what he's good at from what he's always been great at which is getting buckets like that's what he's great at and, and there is a little bit of an adjustment period. Obviously, five assists before turnovers. That's not good. But yep. ag- again, like he's going through a phase where it's going to be ugly. And you have nobody else. Like, you, like you're not going to start Augustine. So you have to let him make these mistakes, right? Yeah. I, like, if he's shown flashes of games where he just goes crazy with the playmaking. And he's not gotten... Um, all that lucky with his teammates because he's like his potential assist to actual assist ratio is also not really good because people are not knocking down the shots he's providing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you, you can go back and the last season and and you can find games where he has like 14 assists and like three turnovers, like stuff crazy, crazy stuff like that. But so the potential is definitely there. It's a question if it can become consistent and. Something that Kelly Eichel said uh, on a podcast this week is if you watch the Rockets, you'll see Kevin Porter Jr. getting a lot more usage than Jalen Green. And what he, I don't know if this is based on sources, because he's the, the athletic guy for, for, the, for mm-hmm. the Rockets, so maybe it's sources, maybe it's just his opinion. But I thought it was really interesting that he said the Rockets view KPJ uh, like, as less likely to achieve his potential than Jalen Green. They feel like Kevin Green will be a star no matter what, so they're giving KPJ the ball more because he'll need he'll need more more touches more more touches to eventually reach his potential. And and when Kevin Green, they just think that no matter what, he'll be a star, so he can wait like a season or or something like that. That's interesting. So that's I don't know if I agree with the philosophy, but that's I, I don't either. Something, <laughs> <laughs> but that's something that I I like was new to me and was intriguing, so I. I don't have my, my mind made up on that just just now. Yeah, I, I don't know if this is a hot take or what, but in terms of talent, like, am I crazy to think that KBJ pretty much has it all, except for, like, elite athleticism like a Jalen Green? But if you really think about it, like, high IQ player can pass, and create his own shot. I mean, and until this day, like, Jalen has shown flashes of that, but he's not the level passer that KPJ is. And who knows if he'll ever be that type of passer. Yeah, I think maybe maybe they're thinking about it from a, a work ethic standpoint. Uh, mm. I don't know if it, this is common knowledge yet, but Kellen Green is a dream, right? He's always For practicing. Sure. He is. He's like, and the Rockets demand that from him, but that's also something that we knew pre-draft. So maybe they believe in that. And as, as much as KPJ is not that, like, he definitely works and if without he wouldn't be this, as good as he is if he didn't but they feel like it's less likely that he'll achieve his full potential but i do agree with you there's nothing kpj can do and there's something and so and he said i mean i, I know his measurement is six four but he said mm-hmm. he's six 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 eight with the with the hair if you count the hair which obviously doesn't <laughs> count but if i said he was six six people would say oh it's because of the hair no i'm saying he's six six without the hair mm-hmm. and if you got a six-six point guard that can create his own shot, he can step back mid-range, get to the rim, uh, dunk on you. 
he can pass the ball. What I, the biggest question for him last year was he looked god awful at defense. And right. this season, I would say defense was the strongest part of his game because he's really committed on that side of the ball. And he's gotten dunked on by LeBron. And that's stuff that will happen if you're trying to play good defense. But he's definitely been a lot better than he was last season. And that's something that Salas has said uh, as well. And I feel like him being at least a decent defender uh, in his prime and when he becomes like an actual option will also be uh, a really big deal because you don't want him to become like a Colin Sexton where he's a good scorer. He can kind of pass the ball, but he's an absolute liability on defense. So you, it's really hard to be a star guard in this league and yes, you got to have it all. So I feel like his strides on defense have been really good to see and hopefully the trend continues and his playmaking picks up. Uh, I would much rather have KBJ and Colin Sexton. I mean, like you said, just, just yeah. a size difference. Colin is little, like he's 5'11", 6 feet, and that that in itself, unless you're Davion Mitchell, you are a liability on defense. KPJ, although I, I, I don't think he's been good, I think he's been maybe above average, but he's playing hard, and you have to give him credit for that because that matters. That means that he's focused, he's locked in, he's trying to be a better defender. He has all the qualities to be a... a Let's put it this way. If you're not a minus defender with his type of skill offensively, that's a good thing. Your goal should always be don't be a minus defender, don't be a liability. And I feel like he's going towards that uh, that trajectory of not being a minus defender. Like we can all agree with that. So you got to give him kudos for that. So your point about Jalen Green, yeah, like I, I have sources with the uh, G League Ignite. That was all they said. The guy wants to be the best. His work ethic is unmatched. So you so you gotta love that. So I do understand um, the guy from the Athletics saying things like that and, and where the Rockets mindset is on Jalen Green. Um, I don't know too much about where the mindset of KPJ is. Maybe you might know that a little bit better, but I mean, just his talent, bro. Like the again, it's it's and it might be because that was his thing right in Cleveland. Like, okay, he he don't have the mindset, he's a he, he's a nut job. Uh, he has anger issues, whatever the case may be, but his talent has never been disputed. Like his talent is special for KBJ. That's why I'm so high on the kid. So, and essentially the Rockets got him for free. So, so it's like <laughs> you can't really lose. <laughs> I mean, he's my my take on his mindset is he is definitely you can see there are some issues, but the talent is so big that you you gotta like put your best foot forward and try for him to be the best he can be. And John Lucas is known as a guy that turns around a lot of careers. I mean, if you, uh, if you, I, I won't, don't want to get into his story because it's pretty depressing uh, yeah. to begin with, but he over, he overcame a lot. He was a number one pick for the Rockets or number two uh, uh, when he was drafted. Mm-hmm. And he had some problems with drugs and stuff like that. And he overcome that. And he became this guy that helps a lot of players turn it around. And he's doing it with KPJ. And I think down, hopefully KPJ can overcome that. And to, to me, what you can see a lot in games is sometimes when things aren't going his way, he gets kind of frustrated and, and it's, it's, it kind of spirals a little bit out of control. Uh, if he can get inside his head that he needs to be aggressive at all times, um, he needs to be driving to the rim or shooting when he has a shot and you see him from take a lot these days, which is kind of sad because the shot is falling too well. Right. Uh, if he can nail that down, like there's, there's, I would say there's very few players with a potential as high as KPJ just because there's nothing he cannot do. And that's really rare to say. That is true. That is great insight by Prodigy. Great follow on Twitter. My go-to guy for all Rockets news, man. It's been a pleasure and an honor to have you on the show. I think we got to do this at least bi-weekly, man. Just a, a checkup every two weeks. Um, if you have time on Saturdays, you know, this this could work, man. I'm super excited um, to, to really have you as a guest a, a lot um, here on this platform. Any final thoughts that you would like to add? to this first show with uh with uh, with us together yeah I, i'm definitely down i'm, I'm all as i said i'm always down to, to talk about the rockets it's 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 a passion for me so whenever whenever you need me i'll i will find a way to make it work 
if you like if if you guys are listening to me and you wanna you like what I what I'm saying and you wanna follow my uh, my stuff, everything that I do from I do podcasts articles, you can find all of, all of that stuff at Prodigy without the Y uh, NBA, and on Twitter and you'll find everything I do linked there, and you'll find a lot of stuff like what I said today. There it is, y'all. Thank you guys so much. If you enjoyed this podcast video, you'll see it on YouTube, iTunes. Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, please like, share, and subscribe for more Rockets content like this. Until next time, peace.